Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2. It is I, the Golden Joe Oblivion. We're back with Lord Paramount John of the North of House Stargarian. Stargarian. I have not gotten around to changing any of the sigils because I am absolutely terrible at remembering to do stupid shit like that. Uh, great YouTuber here. Anyways, last episode, we left off waging a war for independence in the North. And we married Daenerys Targaryen, so good job on us for actually pulling it off. I didn't think we were going to be able to do it, but she actually agreed to it. But unfortunately, Jon and Danny are separated by the Narrow Sea. She's off fighting her own wars in Slaver's Bay. We're fighting our own personal wars here in the Iron Throne. Right now, we have a pretty damn good war score against King Tommen. We have a fantastic war score because we control all of our holdings. Which means we can't let them take any of our holdings. Now, I wasn't expecting this, but the Iron Throne has sent their legions north, even though they're also waging a war against Aegon in the Stormlands, as well as Dorne. The Reach is sitting this one out because they're currently subjugated by the Ironborn, who is attacking the Westerlands. They're attacking Cersei Lannister, and they're trying to take Kraykhal, of all fucking places. The Riverlands is a complete fucking mess. Um, Lord Peter Littlefinger is still the overlord, or, well, presumably the overlord of, uh, of, um, sorry, I'm getting distracted. He is the overlord of the Riverlands, and I can see now that his daughter is named Elaine Stone, who looks very much like a, like a Stark, a Stark that I remember. You know what? Oh, no, that would have been terrible. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, for a moment there, I was like, holy shit. John could have accidentally married his sister if we had been paying attention. But anyways, that aside, that doesn't help us. That aside, the veil is also here. Robert. Hmm. Robert should marry Sansa. He should, and that would make a strong ally in the veil. Anyways, enough of that. The legions from the Iron Throne are marching upon us. And let's see, 9,500 plus 2,800. That's almost... That, that, that numbers us. That outnumbers us by a considerable margin. Our army right now, well, our army was geared up to be defensive. Let's see, Sir Lyle, Lyle the Strong Boar, uh, Harold, you were on the flank, Hostin, 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 Hostin. He has cancer, but he was a great, he was a great, um, but the thing is, is I don't think they're actually going to attack. I don't think they're going to attack us. I think they're going to try to take Silver Reed. And if that is the case, then before we even start this, I want to invite a bunch of new commanders who are good offensively. Um, of which I'm not seeing many. Leads from the rear. Yeah, see, that, that's defensive. That's defensive. Aggressive leader. Now that's more like it. We got a couple of them that are, that are, uh, 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 aggressive leaders. John, are you considered an aggressive leader? I'm not sure if you are. Um, 14, Sir Alaric Ironwood. No, you're also kind of defensive. But do we have aggressive fighters here? Inspiring leader. That would be good. Leader in the center. That also would be good. Um, Torin. Lewin. Lewin, my man. Lewin, my man. John, how do you face in war? All right, John. You probably, you probably should be on a flank, and we should have Sir Lewin as our center. Assuming that we need to attack them here, which we may not have to, let's just wait for them to gather their forces here and see if they march on Mokalin. Oh, no. Wait a minute. That's not right. How is that now 6,000? Okay. They're assaulting, and they're going to take Silver Reed. What we need to do is we need to attack them now. We need to attack. So whoever is going to be in our center, we had a... We, Sir Lewin. Lewin. Brother. Lewin. Where are you? Where is he? There you are. He is going to be our new center. Lewin's going to be in the center because he's got aggressive leader and direct leader. His, his center is going to be unstoppable. And then we need someone who would be a good flanker, who's hopefully... Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if they're unyielding. Here's... So when I get the option of choosing between defender and unyielding, I always go with unyielding because, despite its name, they don't take any malice, any kind of debuffs from being fixated on defense. Defender takes a malice or a debuff. Uh, so... Unyielding works both ways. It doesn't penalize us when we're on the attack, and it boosts us when we're on defense. Defender boosts you on defense and penalizes you when you're on attack. So it doesn't matter if they have unyielding. Hostin, 
you're going to be there. Sir Hugh, you are also a flanker, but here's what I'm talking about. He has Defender, which means he takes 10% debuff. Who is he? Who is his name? Hugh. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh. Where are you? Sir Hugh. All right. Let's get someone else on a flank here who's going to be good. And we have Cool, who is a trickster and a flanker. And it seems Cool is the best thing we're going to get on the flank here. What is this? Battle Narrow Flank. This character's mastered the craft of finding the perfect terrain for defensive battles. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that means. John is here, but John's a defender, though. So he will take... Yes, but it's offset by the fact that he's an inspiring leader, though. So it might be able to... It might be able to... Fuck it, John. Get in there. Get in there and attack. So we're going to lose our war score. Oh, shit. They're also landing troops, too. That won't matter. Because we're going to outnumber them here. And they're currently sieging... They're, they're, they're storming Fenden in Silver Reed. We're going to lose our war score over time. But that's because John, Tom, Tom and... I was about to call him Tom and Stark. God damn it. Tom and Lannister is actually pretty damn smart. We see we've got a, a splinter force up here. Can we disband this army? Now let's march you down to Last Hearth. All right. Press the attack. This is our time. This is our time. That's what I'm talking about. And now we're, we're going to march on them. They outnumber us. No, we outnumber them by a teeny margin. And of course, they're going to be at almost 100% morale by the time we fucking get there. Jesus Christ, guys. And now our movement is locked. Our movement is fucking locked. Great. We might actually lose this now because they outnumber us by a pretty solid margin. And it took us 300 years to march into Silver Reed. And so now they're almost at 100% morale. So this could be the end and our movement is locked. So, hmm. That was quite the blunder, Jon Snow. That was quite the blunder. Who knows? Maybe we can maybe we can herald some kind of miracle, but I'm not counting on it. I'm not counting on it. Yep, fighting, 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 fighting. The enemy's holding their line. The enemy is holding fantastically well. I want to take a look at some of their leaders. Holy warrior, damage against religious enemies, and she has cancer. Who else do we have here? Yeah, we're taking devastating losses. Jon Snow, I blame you for this one. Lord Braun, Sir Bryce. Holy Warrior. You're an inspiring leader. Hmm. So, despite having Sir Lewin, who is an aggress a direct leader and aggressive, and a cavalry leader, he's still getting bested. And we so far have gotten no opportunities to duel anybody. Sir Lewin Faith, yep, he's failed us. My prisoner Devin is complaining about his cell. Mind that piety. Yep, our forces have been crushed. You were separated from your men? And it's Lord Braun of the... Uh, okay, Lord Braun. This is Braun of the Blackwater. And he's married to Lady Lawless of Stokeworth. He's already has, he already has a kid. Cynthia Blackwater. Interesting. Um, we can send Sir Nicholas Soul after him. And he's dead. Lost his leg. Um, Lord Braun, is he taking any injuries? No, he hasn't. His dual skill is 90. But our dual skill is 95. Because we're still a teenager, and we're stressed, and we're honest. All right, now we have to duel. Oh my god! All right, so we're gonna duel. <laughs> we're gonna duel Brawn. Uh, we're gonna duel Brawn, and we're gonna have a disastrous. We're gonna lose this battle anyways. We're probably also gonna lose the war. And I might sound salty, and it's because I am. I am salty, and I'm not blaming myself for this one. I'm blaming this for craziness with the mechanics of the game. Anyways, let's get this duel with Lord Braun out of the way. I have a unique ability. My direwolf ghost will aid me. So essentially, we can send a ghost after Braun. Okay. Um, gets formidable animal companion. Your direwolf ghost attacks. All right, let's try that. As you and Braun engage, you, you slip up and leave an opening in your defense. A skilled warrior like... Lord Braun needs no invitation to strike. What happened to Ghost? What the fuck happened to Ghost? And we're dead. We're dead just like that. We're dead. You see how sometimes the game really... So, we're not going to end the series here. I'm going to restart it, and we're going to rethink this battle for Silvery. But this is what I'm talking about, is this particular game right here. This episode right here. I This, this smells stinky. This smells like some cheese. Lord Braun, completely unaffected by Ghost. Literally un unaffected. It's like Ghost didn't even attack. It's, it's it's like John said, go get him, Ghost. And Ghost just stood there and wanted to stir off in the distance. And then we instantly die. So I'm calling bullshit. As far as that particular battle went to explain my saltiness, 
For all intents and purposes, we had a really well set up army there. But what fucked us over was that our it took forever for our army to march into the next neighboring county. And as far as I can tell, there's really no good explanation for it. I mean, it's we weren't crossing a river or anything like that, or crossing crazy terrain, not that I'm aware of. I can't click on it now. But it took too long for our army to cross into that county. And Tommen was able to land troops via the sea, and it had virtually no effect on the enemy's morale because it took us so goddamn long to march on the enemy. So, anyways, enough complaining. Enough complaining from me. I'm going to jump back into that scenario again, and we're going to do this shit right, so I will see you all in a moment. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are back right where we were left off last time, and... I think what I'm going to do is we're just going to ball out and we're just going to attack them right fucking now. Fuck everything. We need to be aggressive and we need to take Silver Reed from these sons of bitches right now. Now, I don't know if I want to have Sir Lewin leading the army again because he didn't do that well. But his his traits are so good, though. His traits are so good for attacking. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine how they didn't work out. Um... Uh, I forget that you can actually check people's dual or personal combat skill here with this little uh, sword and chess piece. Right. So Sir Lyle, the, cro the, the strong boar. Sir Lyle, the strong boar, has a dual skill of 90. We will take you as a bodyguard. And then we're going to replace Sir Alaric Ironwood with Lewin, Lewin Vaith. Sir Lewin Vaith. And we're going to have him lead the center. Because in theory, he should have no problem being able to defeat this little army right here. And my goal... My goal is to replace Sir Hugh Hugh. Sir Hugh you, goddammit. I'm wondering if we shouldn't have an organizer here. Harold would be fantastic, but no, Lewin, Lewin just is so much better at the center. Problem is, is that we can't make use of Harold's abilities, siege leader and organizer. Both great, great, great uh, traits to have. Let's put Lyle in the other flank here. And now you might be saying, well, Joe, don't you want to wait for this army to get here so you can wipe them out all at once? I don't. Not this time around. I want to press and get this army by itself, and I think if we attack now, this army will back off, and that's what I want. And we know a fleet is coming by sea to support this force here, so we're just going to fuck these guys up right now, and they're gonna—they're all gonna charge. Yeah, see, that, it's something about this travel distance that's just ridiculous. All right, but we're hopping in there. We outnumber them, and more. They're coming via ships. They're coming via ships. Come on, there we go. Again, don't know if this is gonna work out. There's Sir Brendan Blackwood, there's Lady Moya of Lady Moya Moya of Great Fork, and Lord Perkin of North Cracklaw. Your quarter, Sir Nicholas Saul, Saul wants to get married. I'll find him somebody nice. Let's make this quick. Um, you can marry Nella. There you go. Marry Nella. Now, how's this battle gonna go? Okay, we're gonna get thrusted into a duel right away, which is very good for us. You're separated from your men in the chaos of battle, and now find yourself in the midst of war. Sir Lyle, the strong boar is on our flank there. Excellent. And let's see. She has 25 dual skill. We have 95. This should be easy. Cole. Who is Cole? He's a bodyguard, right? Let's send Cole after her. The mere sight of Cole is enough to make Lady Moya turn and run with her tail between her legs. Excellent. And we get 10% morale, even though we already have 100% morale. But my goal is now that we're destroying their forces here, as more units come into the battle, they're going to essentially be inheriting the destroyed morale of the previous fighters, so this will work out to our benefit. So here, being aggressive was really, really good. It was a really, really good good idea this time around. Although it took it took losing to realize that, and that, may, that might seem kind of cheesy. It might seem kind of cheesy, but at the same time, it's a great way of teaching people, myself included, how to be better at this game. So look at it like that. It's a good lesson. But we are crushing them, and we can see that Sir Lewin Faith's traits here are, excuse me, excuse me, what, what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? Okay, so 31 galleys just dropped off, I don't know how many troops. I would say at least 3,000, because that's how many 31 galleys can actually carry. And something about that 3,000, all of a sudden, has destroyed Sir Lewin's center. His center is, is, is literally gone now. Um, his commander that he was fighting, I think the commander's also changed. I think that's what happened. Interesting. Yes, and it doesn't seem to matter 
that they're dropping, and then John's flank is gone, and our armies are gone too. So they're actually able to drop... They're, they're, they can drop soldiers from sea, and they should be taking a pretty big morale penalty, but they're not. At least not that I can tell. Interesting. We could be in a position now where this is a battle we cannot win, simply because... Game mechanics are not either not working in our favor. Ooh, Mokalen has mountains. No, and they have the mountain. They have the mountain te uh, tool text graphics. They yeah, they have the mountain graphics, but it doesn't say mountains, and it doesn't actually say it confers any kind of bonus. Hmm. I wonder. He would accept a white piece. A white piece. So that is one way we can cheese it, because if we surrender, we become imprisoned, we become independent. Because this is this because the way I see it is is that when we attack them here in Silver Reed, something about this fucking place, this cursed god awful place, is making uh John Stark John whatever his name is now, whatever he is, uh is making him lose. So I'm not sure if this is actually a battle we can win. If we attack, even if we wreck them early on, they just land more troops from the Western Bight. And then despite doing amphibious landings into a battle they're already losing, they somehow are able to pull the battle around in their favor, which is miraculous to me. And it does seem quite miraculous because this is normally not something you're able to do. Especially since they're only dropping, at most, 3,000 troops at a time. If we wait in Mokalen, they'll attack us and they'll have enormous advantage in terms of just troops. I kind of want to try again, but this time I don't want to use Luan Vaith because there's something about the guy that I don't like. He, he should have traits. He technically has traits that should be able to... I don't know, he's got fantastic traits for being on the attack and holding the center. I wonder if it's not because... Well, I don't know. I'm going to reload it again, and we're going to try it this time without Lu and Faith, and we're going to see if we can't fucking win this goddamn battle. Alright, I just realized that we have another 1300 soldiers down here that we actually disbanded because they were going to get utterly wiped out when the doom stack started fl flooding flooding towards us now my my I, I don't know what to do now i mean my thinking my thinking is if we raise our levies down here it'll make this army stop to fight them and it will allow us to march in on this army here and we'll delay reinforcements. I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I think I'm going to try it anyways. Um, John. I think I want John to lead the center because we have a problem with our center constantly breaking. And who better than Jon Snow himself uh, holding the center? Because, I mean, if we can get into a duel, we'll we can, I mean, we can kill just about anybody. Unless, of course, they deploy Sir Robert Strong or some crazy shit like that. Um, let's see. I have John. Hugh, are you good on the flank? You are good on the flank. Flanking plus 20%, but you do lose 10%. Ugh, I don't know if I want that. Sir Lyle Strongboard, we're going to pick you again. And then, let's go Alaric. Let's see, you lead from the rear. Morale damage minus 10. Heavy infantry. Cavalry leader. What kind of soldiers do you have here on this flank? You don't have much in the way of heavy cavalry. Most of your troops are heavy infantry. Most of your troops are heavy infantry. I like the idea of having Hostin on the flanks, even though he has cancer. We're not going to have Sir Lewin Vaith because he is a shit. He is a shit. That's 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 all I can that's all I can describe him as. Um, who is this guy? Nicholas, Nicholas Saul. You can actually be replaced. Um, Nicholas Saul. Let's get rid of you. Um, hmm. Trickster siege leader. Morale, damage, and defense. Maybe Torin? I don't know. Inspiring leader. I don't know. Is there anyone else we can invite that is decent? That we can make use of? Although we would have to wait. 
We would have to wait for them to join us. No, I'm really not seeing anybody. What did that say for the description? This character fights best when positioned on the flank of an army striking deeply at the chinks in the enemy's armor. Interesting. And we will be on the attack, too. So, Hostin is a flanker. John is an inspiring leader, but also a defender. So, eh, that may or may not work. And then Hugh is also a flanker and a defender. Uh, fuck it. Just invade again. Invade again! Um, and then what we're gonna do... Is, when are you guys gonna arrive in Silver Reed? Let's see, this army will have its movement locked on the 23rd moon. In eight days. So what I'm thinking is we'll wait for eight days. And then we're gonna raise the levees down here. Now they're gonna get wiped out. But it's going to make this army essentially reset their movement. So they can't join the battle. So we will outnumber them. My thinking is that we need to take Silver Reed. And we need to wipe out the bulk of these forces right now. Because this... Th well, this army right here is a huge pain in my ass. So we're gonna wait to the 23rd... The 23rd of the 3rd moon. As we're marching down, 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 down. 23rd, and their movement is locked. Now I'm going to raise you. Ah! Army's going to get wiped out. But it's going to delay them from reinforcing their friends. Now when are we going to arrive? We'll have its movement locked on the, on the, thir on the 30th? Another week later. I don't know if raising these soldiers now would have made a difference. What the fuck is the... Why does it take so long to march from Mokalen to Silver Reed? That's amazing to me. And this army's gonna be fucking gone by the time... By the time... Yep, yeah, now they're well on their fucking way. And they've got friends here too. You're, you're shitting me with this. You're shitting me with this. Nicholas, fuck off. You can't... You can't marry anybody. And now they're gonna drop 3,000 men. And it's going to completely turn the battle in their favor. There we go. Yeah, it completely turns the battle, and then Sir Hugh Yu is losing his flank. Come on. Come on, you assholes. Come on. You're separated from your men. Prepare to die. We could send... We could send... No, I want to fight. That's right, coward. Run back to the Great Fork. They still outnumber us a lot, a lot, but it gives us 10% morale. Okay, for all of our flank... Yes! 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 Fuck you, King Tommen. Fuck you. That's what you get. Holy shit. Our armies are destroyed. <laughs> Our armies are devastated. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so we have 4,000. We have 4,000 soldiers. Tommen's gonna have way more than we do. He has another 7,000. Could we hire any mercenaries? There are zero mercenaries. Apparently, there are no mercenaries in, in, in the world at this point in time. King Tommen, you son of a bitch. So he's fighting the war for Dornish independence and northern independence. Interesting. I guess Aegon lost his little war, and now Dorn is fighting for their own independence. Now, here's the question. Do we go on the offensive now? Because they really, really, really outnumber us. And if we follow them, if we follow them, they'll be crossing a river. No, no, no. If we follow them, we'll be crossing a river. Now, they have no morale. But they also outnumber us two to one. So that's a problem. That is a problem. Hassan, are you good with defense? You actually, you kind of are and you kind of aren't. Yeah, they vastly outnumber us. So maybe get all of, just get as many soldiers as we can. I have a feeling more and more Iron Throne soldiers are going to keep coming. So it's winnable. The battle here is winnable, but it comes at such a heavy cost. Now what we could do is we could, we could sue for a white piece, which would prevent Jon Snow from being imprisoned. But at the same time... At the same time, though, this is kind of a major battle that we've won. If we can just keep them from taking any more territory... I'm not sure, though. They're just going to come back. They're just going to come back. That's the problem. But, I mean, we did win. I mean, it was kind of cheesy. We had to reload and fight, which I no normally never do. I normally never do. Yeah, they're just going to send more and more soldiers up towards us, aren't they? 
But I mean, Silver Reed's a great position because they have to cross a river to get to us. Greywater Watch. Yeah, but they outnumber us a lot, a lot, a lot. Hey, they're falling back, though. They're falling back. My liege, I was just approached by Amorai Crane. I will engage him in theological debate. Excellent. So, the war score is in our favor now. And they're, all, they're, they're, they're fucking coming back. Let's see. We'll arrive 5,000 under the command of Lord Commander Marin. Uh, yes. I mean, you know what? I was going to end the episode here, but why don't we just watch to see what happens when they attack us? Let's just see what happens. They vastly outnumber us, but let's see if we can't win some kind of... some. If we can't win something here. And depending on how this goes, we'll probably... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Depending on how this goes... Jesus Christ, their armies are just endless. It doesn't make any sense to me. All right, that's fine. Attack us! It's gonna take 300 years for this to... It, yeah, just something about the neck. Just something about the neck. You're separated from your men and Mr. Chaos. It's Braun. It's Braun again. It, it's... I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Fuck Braun. We're killing him this time. We're killing him this time. Let's... We could send Sir Lin Corbray. Ooh. But knowing Braun, he's probably gonna kill Sir Lin Corbray. Most likely. Fuck it. We're going to send our most dangerous bodyguard after Braun of the Blackwater. And we're going to see just how OP Braun secretly is. Send him. W what happened? What happened? I think Braun is dead. <laughs> I think Lin Corbray killed Braun. But it didn't give me any kind of tooltip or anything. Of the Blackwater. Yes, Braun is dead. Was slain by Lin Corbray in battle. But I didn't, it's, it, the game didn't even give me that satisfying, that little satisfying ending event tooltip, whatever, where it says, oh, hey, your bodyguard just killed the enemy commander. Okay, their flank is gone. Their flank is gone. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You were separated from your men, and now it's Lord Lucas. We could send Torin. Uh, I don't know if I want to. Torin is such a good commander, though. No, fight him. Lord Lucas suddenly halts his charge, and you are left to wonder why, but for a moment, when Sir Rory sweeps in from behind him, get back to our line, my lord, he shouts. I'll handle this. Fighting the Kingsguard wasn't a part of the plan. What? What is this bullshit? Interesting. So, we were confronted in a battle... But now the enemy gets to send their own bodyguard. I mean, as far as the battle's going, they outnumber us, but their flank is gone because Lord Braun died to Sir Lin Corbray. But now we're fighting not just Lord Lucas, but also a member of the Kingsguard. This could be a tooltip error, maybe. But he's a sworn shield, right. Fine, you shall die as well. And he's a really good commander too. Commander Duelist. John, you're probably dead. Wow, the game like the game is doing everything it can to prevent Jon Snow from winning. I've never seen this side of this sort of tenacity. I'm actually kind of impressed. I'm impressed that that the that the AI is getting this this brutal. All right, we'll fight him. My ghost, my direwolf ghost will aid me. Well, the last time we used ghost, ghost didn't do anything. Do we dare risk it? All right. You see a weak spot of vulnerability in Sir Rory's defense. It's not much, but it's all you need. That's really weird. That's really weird. It's almost like Ghost doesn't exist. We strike. He tries to fight back, but I force my way through and move to quickly sever his fingers from his body. Finally, I thrust my long claw hard into his chest. The surprise is clear on his face. As, his bl as blood fills his mouth, I must have hit something important. So we've killed the bodyguard. We got five prestige. Oh, come on. We killed a guy who had 80 personal combat skill. And we only get five prestige. All right, now we're fighting. Now we're fighting Lord Lucas. He has a dual skill of forty, but knowing our luck, he's gonna kill Jon Snow. And we can't use our we can't use our attack dog anymore. So um, we're not strong, but we are young. No, he's even younger than us though, and he's shy. We could attack with speed. 
You parry Lord Lucas away with Longclaw, allowing you to effortlessly bring down your weapon on an opening in his defense. He tries to... Hey, we killed him! Fuck yes. And we get 15 prestige for that. And we get 20 morale. 20 morale. Thank you very much. Even though our morale is already sort of peaked. Now it's peaked. And then their flank is going to be gone. After a long time of training both day and night, you have finally mastered the art of combat. Few could contend with you. Um, Duelist is kind of a shitty lifestyle trait, though. Duelist kind of sucks. Um, There are certain mods where Duelist has been... It's been changed, so it's actually really, really good. But this is... this. It's not, it's not in this mod, so... We're just going to pass on that. We're going to pass on this. Thank you. All right. We've crushed their flank. And although they outnumber us, we... Oh, my God. They still keep coming. Jesus Christ. We're not going to have any men by the end of this battle. Are you... Excuse me. Lost control of Deep Town. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. They have got a splinter army up here attacking Skagos, which removes our war score. Sir Wallace Chelstead, I will not grant you permission because you are not helping the war. You're not helping the war effort. Are you kidding me? Just collapse, you son of a bitch. What the fuck is that? Are you kidding? Austin, what the hell happened? You had him on the ropes and, and yet you then you collapse, you son of a bitch. My Lord Treasurer is... And everyone wants to get married. We're fighting for the fate, the fate of the North here, and yet I'm being spammed by messages for people wanting to get married. No, you will not marry. You will not marry. Fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. So how many men are they sending at us now? How many more can they have? Really? <laughs> this is this is this is the golden salt over uh, over Westeros now. Jesus. So six thousand men. That is, that is amazing to me. That is actually amazing. Another 2,800. Another 2,800. It's actually amazing to me. And now we're in battle again, and Hostin is already broken. But, I mean, we vastly outnumber them. How many men? They have five men. They have five men on one flank. Fuck it. Kill everybody. Kill them all. Kill them all. I'm going to lose my mind. I am going to lose my mind. He has a dual skill of five. And he, and he, and he, has, and he didn't die the first round, so we have to fight him again. No. No, die. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. Now's our chance. Sure. Feels good to be recognized. Yeah, that's nice. They just keep coming. They just keep coming. And they've got more. Jesus Christ. And now John has been replaced by Sir Harold. Which isn't the worst thing. Sir Harold is an unyielding. He's an, he has got unyielder, so that's nice. But we have no more men, and um, apparently we have personal levies now. Uh, are you up here? What? What is um? All everyone, every we're, we're fighting tooth and nail now for the for the north. We're fighting tooth and nail. My lord, you received word from the suspe suspected traitor. Yeah, Sansa's back. Thanks. Great. Super. I am very much appreciated. Um, you. March down here, everyone. We're fighting tooth and nail. Oh, they have an army of 5,000. Tommen. Tommen, Tommen, Tommen. You stupid son of a bitch. You stupid, broken, overpowered son of a bitch. Alice Lannister Lannister's currently under our control, and she's married to Sir Lyle. No, 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 no. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. We're just going to fight to the end. Can we get mercenaries now? No, we can't get mercenaries now. Apparently, there are no mercenaries. It's kind of weird. Let's see. What is uh? Yeah, they've got another seven thousand men. Is is it just his allies? Is it is? It must be his allies. Yeah, I think it's his allies. Okay. I wonder if we could, out of curiosity, order Danny's armies to come here. <laughs> we desperately need her help. We desperately need her help. Yeah. So I mean, you can march us march on us again. Yeah. Yeah. 10,000 men. Another 10,000. That's great. That's yeah, another 10,000. Oh, great. Just just fight. 
Just fight. Just fight to the end. Just kill them all. Because Jon Snow, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be able to win this. It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not happening, buddy. Because the, the, the... How do I describe it? The portals, uh, it, it's almost like these armies are marching from oblivion itself. It's, it's, they're coming from another dimension. They're endless. It's an endless legion of King Tommen's bullshit and other madness. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we're probably not, we're, okay, we're not going to continue from this point. We're going to rethink our war against the Iron Throne, but you've seen it here, ladies and gentlemen. You're, you've seen it here. The level of bullshit the enemy is willing to stoop to in order to get what they want. It is rather miraculous. And at this point, I think it would be totally legitimate to just teleport Tommen into our dungeon because fuck that guy. Fuck that cheater. That's that's what this is. This is the Golden Salt episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sure it was entertaining. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video. I have been the Golden Joe Oblivion. This has been poor, poor, poor... Lord Paramount Jon Snow of the Sad North, and until next time, I will see you all later.